The Power Rangers show has had 25 years worth of amazing characters with their own deep and iconic backstories to go with it. But who has made the most appearances in the show? Has it been Tommy? Jason? Zordon? No. It's America's favorite couple, Bulk and Skull. Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up everybody, Testa here. Welcome back to their video and today we'll be talking about the greatest couple in Power Rangers history, the comedic duo known as Bulk and Skull. Now this video idea is actually suggested by one of you. And if you wanna make your own video suggestions, let me know in the comments down below or join my Discord today. Who knows, your idea might be shown in a future video. So hey, 1,000 likes and I'll bring more character profiles just like this one. And if you haven't subscribed or ring the notification bell, make sure you do so. I upload Power Ranger videos every single week and I'm sure you don't wanna miss it. So let's get started with the history of Bulk and Skull, the best comedic duo in Power Rangers history. Bulk and Skull, or if you wanna use their government names, Farkas Bulk Bulkmeyer or Eugene Skull Skullovich. Weird names, but that's their government for a reason. They were the main comedic duo seen in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers until Power Rangers in Space, with appearances in seasons after that. They're the characters with the most appearances in any Power Rangers show, and these guys are definitely lifelong friends. And you know what? They may have destined to be friends. If you look throughout the history of Angel Grove, you can see that the ancestors of Bulk and Skull have always somehow been friends. Like in the colonial Angel Grove of the late 18th century, as we saw Uncle Ben and the town's regiment commander become good pals. Or in the Wild Wild West Angel Grove, when we got One-Eyed Bulk and Doc Skullovich of the year 1880. But let's fast forward to the present day where we got Bulk and Skull. And throughout the near 25 year history of Power Rangers, we have seen these characters evolve from a silly pair of teens to respectable adults. So let's start off, in Mighty Morphin Season 1, they just start off as, you know, regular bullies. They kind of looked like that cheesy 90s bullies that you would see in the movie, normally making fun of our protagonists. They would usually show up in like the beginning of the episode, you know, have a little joke, and at the end they would have this big funny slapstick humor, that's the thing, you know, slapstick humor, wah, bam, bam, slap, slap, falling on banana peel, stuff like that. As anything Bulk and Skull did, we usually end up in their humiliation in the show. Some of their jokes are actually really funny, and it's what made Mighty Morphin Power Rangers so special back then. But as the Rangers would evolve with new Zords and weapons, Bulk and Skull would too. In Season 2 of MMPR, we got a new character arc for these guys. They would try to find out the Power Rangers secret identities. Throughout all that season, they would try to find out their identities through whatever way they can. And they eventually found out in two separate occasions. One time they did and they got their memories wiped. And the second time they were like, hey, these teenagers, yeah, they're the Power Rangers. And Bulk and Skull was like, nah, that's Cap. That's a whole lot of Cap. However, season three of MMPR were served as a big character arc and a real changing point for the comedic duo. While the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had the destruction of the Thunder Zords, the getting of the Ninja Zords and Ninja and their new Ninja Ranger power now modes and stuff like that, Bulk and Skull were joining the police force. They looked up to the Power Rangers, you know, they were out there saving the world every day and Bulk and Skull kind of wanted to do the same. It sucks they really never got the chance to become actual Rangers, except they kind of did in the comic books. Zordon actually made these two Power Rangers for a split second. Even though we didn't see in the show, I thought it was pretty cool. But that's really a different universe. In our main universe, they joined the Angel Grove Junior Police Force. And yeah, you can say they did it to serve and protect the community like the Power Rangers, but they did it for the girls. Because it, it's, it's what they do. Girls like men in uniform, apparently. So Vulcan Skull was like, let's be police. I don't think that would do so good today, though. Just saying. This is where we saw a new character get added to the mix, that being Lieutenant Stone, who would get the duo orders in the training program, which Bulk and Skull would usually fail at because, you know, comedy. 1996's Power Rangers Zeo is where we see Bulk and Skull actually act like good people. They started in the show still being part of the junior police force. That was until Lieutenant Stone got fired himself, and they would join Lieutenant Stone because they were so loyal of him. This is when they made their own private detective agency, solving cases while still in high school. I mean, I gotta respect that. That's a pretty that's pretty good for your college resume, just saying. We also learned that Skull is actually a skilled pianist, and Bulk was actually interested in finding love. These guys were actually growing in front of our eyes, slowly becoming adults and members of society. They also hosted Rito and Goldar as their servants after they had lost their memories, which is kinda cool having monsters do you bidding. Of course, that was until they got the memories back and they stole their bike. 
that, that that probably wouldn't be cool and they would end this season going on a secret mission to paris france what happened in that mission we don't know they would come back in turbo though and we would see lieutenant stone go on to run the gym and juice bar after ernie retired this season however is when things started getting a little bit weird for bulk and skull we had such a rise in their character development where in turbo it just got kind of shaky well wavy if you want to go by my hands they had the chance to join the police force once again, but before doing so, Elker actually turned them into chimpanzees. Weird, I know. They spent the whole season as chimps, with Lieutenant Stone kind of being the father of the animals. They would eventually turn back into humans, but they would be invisible. Yeah, no one, no one would, you would hear their voices, but you literally couldn't see them at all. Comedy, I guess? They eventually went back to becoming humans, and that's where we head on to Power Rangers in space. This is where we saw the last main appearances of the duo. Lieutenant Stone would leave the show, and after finding Astronomer's Fortress one night through the telescope, Bulk and Skull would land jobs with Professor Phenomenus, researching alien life. Because you know, this is Power Rangers in space. Uchu Kita, Kamen Rider Force HF. Like and subscribe. And even though Bulk and Skull weren't seen a lot in Power Rangers in space, they had one of the greatest, if not the best moment in their character arc in this show during the finale, Countdown to Destruction. Bulk and Skull would reassure the citizens of Angel Grove that the Power Rangers would never let them down, and they would later stand up to Astronema with their fellow citizens to claim that they're the Power Rangers, and would later help by fighting a lot of Quantrons and Paranatrons, taking the charge in this epic final battle. This was definitely a truly amazing moment, and this is where we know that Bulk and Skull aren't just teenagers anymore, they're true heroes, just like the Power Rangers that they once made fun of and idolized. Now, when we had the Power Rangers Lost Galaxy is when things started going on the downfall. In Lost Galaxy, Bulk and the Professor would board Terra Venture on their way to Miranoi, with Skull missing out as he didn't wake up in time. I know alarms can be tricky, but come on Skull, this said like 5 alarms, come on. Bulk and the Professor would get a job in the Science Division before getting fired, because that's just what happens to Bulk and anyone attached to them. They would later work in the Comet Cafe, and Lost Galaxy would end with Bulk and the Professor landing in Miranoi just with no skull. However, in Power Rangers Wild Force, I know we're keep going here, things have changed again. In the episode Forever Red, we see that Bulk has returned from Miranoi and would run a tropical bar with Skull called Bulk Myers. I made a whole video about Forever Red, Go check that out. I can't believe they made a special about Red Rangers and managed to fit Bulk and Skull in it. That was amazing. So as we can see, things have worked out well for the duo, but things got better. A decade later, Bulk would train Skull's son, Spike, in the ways of the Samurai, just like the Samurai Power Rangers. And throughout the two seasons of both Samurai and Super Samurai, we would see the return of Bulk back in his cheesy 90s glory, being the slapstick guy that we all know and love him for. Skull would later return in the finale, now rich of all things, and they would have a cute reunion. As 20 years later, Bulk and Skull are no longer kids. They're now all grown up, with their own kids to keep going with their legacy. And that, my friends, is the story of Bulk and Skull. What do you guys think? Personally, I loved Bulk and Skull. I always thought they kind of had the funniest parts of the show. You know, the Rangers would kind of get serious with stuff, but when I would see Bulk and Skull, I know a laugh would always be coming. What other comedic duos do you want me to talk about? Bulk and Skull were really like the footprint of comedic duos. They tried to replicate it so many times after that, like Ben and Betty and Beast Movers and Vic and Monty and Ninja Steel, but nothing could come close to the legendary Bulk and Skull. But that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, the Don Fuego. I'm also on Instagram, not Don Fuego. I'll see you guys next week. I'm Este. Have a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you guys are at. E-Squad forever. And of course, and as always, stay awesome, everybody.